Welcome to the road to 1 million US dollars. Let's get right into the Bitcoin chart today. As you can see, yesterday we had another massive dump to the downside, but today we got a little bit of a bounce back to the upside. So once again, it seems like the support level I drew out for you guys in my last video worked out perfectly as that is exactly where we found some support. Now taking a look at this triangle pattern that I have been talking about over the last couple of weeks or so, we have now definitely confirmed a breakout to the downside, meaning that the price target that is currently active is about 58 to 59,000 US dollars. So if you shorted this break to the downside, you would have had a nice 11% move without using leverage. So for example, if you use 10X leverage, you would have had a trade with about 110% profit. One thing to note here as well is that we got pretty close of actually fully completing the technical price target. And the technical price target doesn't always have to be reached. So this means that this move could potentially already be it, but I don't want to bet on that personally, because the main reason that we saw this massive break to the downside was, of course, because yesterday Iran attacked Israel, which is the main cause as to why your portfolio completely blew up yesterday and everyone got turbo wrecked. But in this video, I'm not going to talk about what I think about the war. I think war is horrible and I don't want to get into the details of this attack because, well, simply this channel is only about finance, crypto and investing. And I'm just going to stick to only that. Uh, but it is good for you to know that this is uh, one of the reasons as to why we moved to the downside. So personally, what am I expecting in the short term here? Well, ever since we reached the bottom of this support level right here, we were also in oversold territories on the RSI momentum indicator on the four hour time frame. And typically, whenever we reach oversold territories, there is limited room to the downside, meaning that the RSI first needs to reset a little bit. And the way it does that is either by the price just trading sideways, in which case it would trend to around this 50 level, or by the price moving up, in which case the RSI would move up more quickly. And then once we have completed this move to the upside in the RSI, then there's more room for us to, in the price, move to the downside. And this is also what I said in yesterday's video, but it's good to repeat it because there were a lot of new viewers. And ever since I posted that video, this is exactly what we saw. So we, we moved up a little bit and now we're just kind of trading sideways here. So what is next for the Bitcoin price? Well, in order to determine that, we need to take a look at the support and resistance levels for Bitcoin. So if you want to see the price move up, then the first level of resistance we need to break is from about 65,500 US dollars up to $66,000. Because in the case that we break this level of resistance, then the next level of resistance above that is from about 68,500 US dollars all the way up to $70,000. However, in the case that we do just see a rejection and start trading to the downside, well, then the next level of support below us is from about 62,500 US dollars all the way down to $60,000. And in my opinion, I think this is a critical level of support because in the case that we lose it, the next level of support below that is from about 58,000 down to 57,000 US dollars for the price of Bitcoin. <laughs> but it gets worse because in the case that we do start trading lower than that, then the next level of support below that is a crazy 53 to about 50,000 US dollars. So in the case that we see this price level being reached in the price of Bitcoin, personally, I will be swapping a lot of my Bitcoin into altcoins, as well as investing some of the profit that I've made so far, uh, because I think this will simply be the opportunity of a lifetime, as most of them will probably be down somewhere between 50 and 80%. But do keep in mind that this is, of course, not financial advice. I'm simply telling you what I see in the charts and you can do with that information what you like. Now, taking a look at the Bitcoin liquidation heat map, it is very clear that most of the liquidity is actually to the upside at about 71.5K. In fact, there's about $1.4 billion worth of liquidity, which means people that are shorting the Bitcoin price that will get liquidated if we reach this price level. And as you know, if you watch my videos regularly, typically the Bitcoin price gets attracted to where there's most liquidity on this chart. And even zooming out on the one month Bitcoin liquidation heat map, you can see a pretty similar story. First, we took out a lot of liquidity about a week ago, about $2.2 billion to the upside, and then quickly moved down to the downside where we took out another close to $2 billion 
with this massive wick right here. However, right now, most of the liquidity is to the upside again. So first you have this pocket at about 71.5K, as I said, and then even above that, there's another massive pocket of liquidity of about $2.2 billion above that level at about 73.2K. And to make this a little more visual, I have drawn it out in this chart right here. So you can see the liquidity levels that I just talked about. So I think it is likely that we do take out this level of liquidity at some point, although we may first have to see more consolidation or even bearish price action. And as far as the Bitcoin ETF flow tables, obviously we are in a weekend right now, so there's no new data as the ETFs only trade on weekdays. However, as soon as we have more data next week, I will be sharing it in the video once again. So if you want to stay up to date with all of the crypto news and price action, do make sure to subscribe to my channel with notifications on so you will be notified whenever I post a new video. And this is especially important with the Bitcoin halving coming up in about four days and 20 hours because this creates a lot of volatility in the market. So it's very important that you stay up to date with what is going on. Now taking a look at Ethereum on the daily time frame. First right here at about $4,000, we got rejected from the 786 Fibonacci level. And then when we started trading down yesterday or two days ago, I said, hey, we lost this 618 Fibonacci level right here. And in the case that we don't close the daily candle above that level, it will be some tough resistance. And then, in fact, we saw a fast move down to the 0.5 Fib level at about 28.50. And here you can see that 0.5 Fib level as well. So in the short term, we have found some support there and are now trading upwards and even sideways a little bit. And of course, taking a look at the RSI on the four hour time frame, we can see a similar story to Bitcoin where we reached oversold territories and now the RSI just needs some time to reset uh, by either us just consolidating sideways or actually getting a bit of bullish price action. So in the case that you want to see the price move up, what do you need to look out for? Well, first of all, a little bit above us at about 31.50 all the way up to 32.50, there's a level of resistance that we would need to break in order to move higher. And then above that, you have the Fibonacci level at about 33.30. Then in terms of support, some levels that you need to look out for in the short term is first of all, this level from about 3000 down to 28.50. And in the case that we do start trading lower and lose this level of support right here, then the next level of support below that is from about 27.30 all the way down to 2600. So these are some of the levels that you need to look out for for Ethereum right now. And of course, there are more support and resistance levels for Ethereum, but I don't think we will be reaching those before I post my next video tomorrow. Now taking a look at Solana on this daily time frame. First, we got rejected from the 786 Fibonacci level, then quickly reached the 618 Fibonacci level. And as soon as we lost that, we immediately traded down to the 0.5 Fibonacci level at about $136, which is where we found some support in the short term. So zooming in on the four hour time frame for Solana and taking a look at the support and resistance levels, well, exactly like I said a couple videos ago, it looks like Solana is about to fall off a cliff. And as soon as we lost that level of support, we immediately traded down to the next level of support below that. In fact, it went all the way down to $112, which is really insane. I would not have expected that. And in fact, I really wish I had some buy orders at around those levels. And I simply didn't expect that this pullback would have been this large in this short amount of time, which of course was fueled by this attack by Iran. In the short term though, we found some support in this level right here from about $134 down to $125. So if you want to know what price levels Solana needs to hold, that's one of them. But in the case that we do lose this level and trade to the downside, then the next level below that is already at 115 down to $100. So pretty insane price action for Solana here. Zooming in a little bit, in the case that you want to see the price of Solana move up to the upside, first of all, we need to break this level of resistance from about $140 up to $150. And in the case that we do break above that level, well, then the next level above that is from about $166 up to $171. Thank you for watching once again. If you haven't joined my Discord server yet, you can do it for free with the first link in the description of this video, as well as just get real-time updates from me about what I think is going on in the market. 
So do make sure to join that with the first link down below. Thank you for watching once again, and I'll see you tomorrow in the next one.